In today's video, we'll take a look at the Freightliner Cascadia. You know, some people love it, some people hate it. My name is Joko and welcome to our channel where we discuss all things trucking and provide interesting tips and tricks for drivers just like yourself. This is not a sponsored video by Freightliner, so all the opinions you will hear about the Freightliner Cascadia from me here today are the ones expressed by us, TRX Express. You know that there will be no filters and we'll try to be as honest as we can. But anyway, let's take a little history lesson about Freightliner and Cascadia. Freightliner have been building Cascadias, uh, have been building trucks actually since 1942. And they pride themselves with building innovative trucks as well as fuel efficient trucks. Now they do offer uh, three different types of cab configurations. So you have a day cab, you have a mid-roof XT and you have a raised roof. The latter two, mid-roof XT and raised roof, are actually sleeper cabs. In 2013 Cascadia produced the Freightliner Evolution which at that time was supposed to be a more fuel efficient and innovative truck which provided a little bit more you know driver comfort on top of that they also improved the aerodynamics of the trucks which in turn led to the fuel efficiency of the truck however in 2017 the cascadia received yet another facelift with a more sculpted design and more aggressive look with the all led headlights pretty much the look that we're all familiar with today in addition to the exterior uh, redesign they also completely overhauled the interior too uh, they introduced all LED dimmable ceiling lights. They redesigned the entire inside cab to improve driver comfort even more. The Cascadia is they come in four different engine configurations. We have the Detroit DD13, DD15, DD16 and the ISX15 EPA. Now this was a little bit in general about Freightliner. Let's talk specifically about one of our trucks which is right there. Real quick, we noticed that 99% of you are not subscribed to our channel uh, and therefore we would like if you would just hit that subscribe button down below because it would help us tremendously in growing our channel and providing more informative videos just like this one for you. So back to the video. On the exterior of this particular Cascadia we can actually see some of those sculpted and more aggressive lines that we mentioned before which were uh, added, which were designed in the you know, in the 2018 and later models, as well as the all LED uh, headlights. We put on all of our trucks deer guards to protect from, obviously, from deer. This particular model has also the hood mirrors. Not all the models have hood mirrors. I think they come in by request. I'm not sure about that. Uh, the side mirrors, I believe, are a little bit bigger than the previous, than the older models. Uh, they're still smaller compared to any uh, to other brands of trucks like the Volvo. And this particular model is a 2019. We also have 2022 and 23 models, but they're obviously on the road and we are not able to talk about them. But let's take a look in the inside and see what this truck has to offer on the inside. All right. Now, like I said, this particular model is a 2019 model and doesn't have the all electronic dashboard, but it still has some of the main gauges and features that pretty much any Cascadia has. One thing that uh, Cascadia also updated in the 2017, uh, actually 18 models and up, is also the button and the text on the buttons. They made them more contrasty, uh, bigger, and as we can see, the dashboard still has a digital element to it, which as you can see, it's right in the middle where you can access all your extra features uh, that, that it offers. But other than that, the mirrors are controlled electronically. Windows are opened per button. You can lock the windows. This particular model has the regular seats as you can see now let's talk about the sleeper configuration as you can see there is there is plenty of space for for two drivers you have a bottom bunk and then you have a top bunk the top bunk is currently folded upwards this is a ladder when you you know unfold the bottom the ladder may come down so that the driver can climb up to the bed and you know get in bed as comfortably as as the driver at the bottom. This truck has a fridge, which is not a fridge that comes with Freightliner. 
there was actually a cabinet here and the the, the space was repurposed for the driver so that they, uh, the driver can have a bigger fridge as you can see you can put a microwave in this space there is some storage right above it you have windows for the top bunk over there and one over there this one is, is partially covered as well as windows for the bottom bunk there and there you have also storage on this side additional storage and you have a bigger closet type storage where you can put all kinds of stuff food uh, clothes or whatever uh, is convenient for the driver right beneath it we have a pull-out table more storage underneath here right above the driver we have additional storage you have some extra storage up here things in the top additional storage here and then also storage in these parts where you can put also your bill of ladings a cb radio uh, you know it all depends on what the driver preferences are but so this is the interior and what it looks like now visibility through the front windshield is well it's not good now because it's mostly covered in ice and snow visibility through the side mirrors is also good like i said they they are a little bit smaller compared to the volvo side mirrors but they are still big enough for you to see uh you know cars in your blind spots especially the mirror up on the hood they serve a great purpose of seeing vehicles that are in your blind spots so you may be wondering okay joker so what makes these trucks you know why do some people love them and why do some people hate them well it's not necessarily always the interior of the truck or you know certain features but it's also a big portion of that is also what is under the hood let's pop the hood and talk about the engine now you may be wondering what kind of fuel efficiency does this type of truck give well it all depends on how you drive the truck some trucks uh, do like six and a half seven eight some do even nine miles per gallon which is which is a lot for a truck you would think that smaller engines provide better fuel efficiency right well not necessarily you see smaller engines are designed for driving on flat roads lighter loads you know roads highways just like here in the midwest pennsylvania in the rockies mountainous areas and uh, you know heavy loads that's where the smaller engines struggle quite a bit uh, and that's why they have a lot of troubles and show a lot of issues later on uh, a lot of defects and that's why a lot of guys don't really like the small engines like the dd13 for the cascadias the dd13 has a inline six cylinder 12.8 liter engine which provides from 370 to 525 horsepower and 1250 to 1850 pound feet of torque now you might think that's a lot but trust me it's not enough you see these trucks when loaded have to pull a combined weight of 80,000 pounds or 40 tons and sometimes even more so they need a lot of uh, power they need to be strong and a small engine like the dd13 like i said before if you put it up with a heavy load in mountainous areas like pennsylvania the rockies you know pretty much anywhere it will struggle and further down the line it will show a lot of issues let's step up to a little bit of a bigger engine which is the dd15 turn the engine off so we can get so it's not as loud as noisy the DD15 is a slightly bigger brother of the DD13 and provides a little bit more power for the driver. It also has got a, a six cylinder inline engine. Matter of fact, it's a 4.8 liter with 400 to 505 uh, range horsepower and uh, 1150 to 1850 pound feet of torque. Now the DD16 is also slightly bigger. It comes in, it comes in at 15.6 liter inline six cylinder with 500 to 600 horsepower and 1653 to 2050 pound feet of torque. Now, as you can see, compare that to the DD13, that's quite a bit of a difference. And trust me, that difference is noticeable the most in those uphills, especially when you have to pull a 45,000 pounds uh, load up a hill. Freightliner also has the Cummins ISX-15 uh, engine for over-the-road trucks, but that type of engine is produced, uh, is put, as far as I know, 
and in the newer vehicles and if we you know fast forward to more modern times uh, they also uh, have a concept uh, truck the e cascadia which is an, ele an electric version of the cascadia but my personal opinion is that this department of cascadia is still in development so and i think we're yet to see a more practical side of that because as it stands right now uh, and these are specs taken from Freightliner's uh, official website uh, the range on the electric trucks they have two battery offerings uh, 438 kilowatt hour and a 291 now the 438 kilowatt hour comes in two configurations four times two and six times four the four times two has 230 miles uh, range but the six times four has a 220 mile range which is which is nothing and the 291 kilowatt hour battery has a range of 155 miles maybe for local driving it could be uh, effective but and efficient you know when you park the truck you put it to charge so that you can do a little bit of local driving but for over the road it's it's not it just doesn't work to conclude, engines are not the only problem that, you know, truckers and truck drivers uh, and companies uh, face nowadays because they're not the only source of, of problems. Uh, with these new trucks, you have all these electronics, one sensor is dependent on another. So when one goes wrong, you know, so does the one connected to it and so forth. And, and all these electronics make even the Terminator jealous, but that's one part of the problem. The other part is mechanics and uh, dealerships charge an arm and a leg and even your firstborn uh, son or daughter. Parts are on back order and whatever parts are available are again overpriced. So sometimes it's not just the engine that might be the problem, but it could be a little small plastic that won't make your truck run. Thanks for hanging around this much, uh, this far in the video. Uh, I would love to hear what you guys have to say, what you drive. Have you had any Cascadias? Have you driven a Cascadia? Have you had any issues? What type of issues have you had with it? You know, let me know down in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. We would greatly appreciate it. That's what motivates us to create all these uh, informative uh, videos. Uh, so like for the YouTube algorithm and I will see you in the next one. Uh -huh.